I'm Randy Ray from University of Missouri, Kansas City, which is still in Missouri. It hasn't moved to Massachusetts yet, but we would like to. Uh, and the Levy Institute. And um, I'm, I'm part of the Ford Foundation projects at the Levy Institute. What I'm going to be doing is laying out an approach to reforming the financial system. Uh, and we base our research uh, on the work of Hyman Minsky, extending his work to analyze this crisis, which um, we could say uh, Minsky was the father of this crisis, not in the sense that he caused it, <laughs> but in the sense that he laid the groundwork for understanding the transformation of the economy that finally led to the global financial crisis. And in a way, he saw it coming in the late 1950s, uh, you could argue. So anyway, to reform the system, we need to understand it. And so I'm going to uh, claim that there are five things we need to understand before we can go about doing that. And all I'm going to do is lay the groundwork. I think Jan Craig will have some specifics. I'm not going to offer those uh, today. Anyway, first we have to understand the nature of the financial system today. Second, the nature of the global financial crisis. Third, the nature of the crisis response that began in 2008 and still continues. Um, fourth, what a financial system ought to do. And fifth, how can we reform the system so that A, it serves a public purpose, and you've heard many of the things that the financial system is doing today that serve absolutely no public purpose whatsoever, uh, so that it can B, be managed. We do not have a financial system that can be managed right now and see it can be rescued in a way that doesn't stink too badly, okay? <laughs> the, um, in the aftermath of uh, 2008, of course, now surveys of the American population, of policymakers, even of Fed officials, tell us that we all think that it stinks, what they did last time. And that actually is what my uh, project is all about, what they did. And sort of a, a, a motto, I think, that, that, that guides probably all of the four projects is, we can't let this happen again. We cannot let it happen again. Um, unfortunately, since we're Minskians, Minsky always says stability is destabilizing. So we know it's going to happen again. Okay. <laughs> but I hope the crisis response next time will be a lot better than that one. So anyway, first, the first topic was the nature of the financial system. The second was the nature of the crisis. When the crisis hit, Paul McCulley of PIMCO said it's a Minsky moment, some truth to that. Many people have been um, arguing that it's a problem in the shadow banking system, and there's some truth in that. But what Minsky had done over the uh, uh, final decade or so of his writing, he died in 1996, in case uh, you don't know, um, was arguing that what had happened is the financial system had been transformed into what he called money manager capitalism. And I think that this is a much better way to look at it than to say that what happened was we had a rise of shadow banks, which of course is true, but it's much more fundamental than that. So what happened was over the post-war period, we had great stability in the early post-war period, but that bred instability. Okay, we had an accumulation of financial assets and liabilities. I like to show a PowerPoint, show you the picture. <laughs> Can't do that. In the United States, uh, debt to GDP ratio is 500%. Okay, so the uh, tremendous increase in the uh, debt ratio. The other side of the coin is there's a tremendous increase in financial assets that need to be managed. That's where he gets the term money manager capitalism. We had a demise of commercial banks. That's important because commercial banks was the safest part of our financial system. They were heavily uh, regulated uh, at one time. Globalization and securitization, Minsky wrote a very early piece, 1987, he said everything that can be securitized will be securitized, and of course, that was absolutely correct. And globalization could not have occurred without the securitization, so th these are two sides of the same coin. And finally, the movement to self-supervision rather than regulation and supervision by the authorities. The idea is that these huge institutions can supervise themselves, and we know how that worked out. Anyway, uh, what we um, then get is a, also a transformation of the real part of the economy, um, such that uh, many people probably have uh, seen Larry Summers' speech, <laughs> and Paul Krugman picked it up. They say we have secular stagnation. The only thing we have going on is bubbles. 
Michael Hudson a long time ago called it Bubblonia. Um, many of us had seen this long before uh, Summers and Krugman finally discovered it. They are on to something. I won't go into it. I don't think that their analysis is, is correct. But anyway, the, the point is, yes, we have a series of bubbles and financial crises, and each one is worse than the previous one and much harder to rescue the financial system once it occurs. We have studied the uh, crisis response in the United States. What happened was, I'll just give you the, the one sentence summary. The Fed had to originate $29 trillion in loans to try to save Wall Street. $29 trillion in loans, and they are not done yet. They had to move on to quantitative easing, and over the course of the past um, five years, they've been giving um, huge quantities of loans, huge amounts of loans at extremely low interest rates, trying to build up bank capital and to restore their balance sheets. Okay, the third point, um, Minsky, when he arrived to the Levy Institute uh, around 1990 or 91, started uh, a research project that he called Reconstituting Finance to Promote the Capital Development of the Economy. Uh, and we have every year since then held a Minsky conference in April, They're uh, continuing the um, research program. And by capital development of the economy, he didn't just mean the private capital investment, he meant capital development very broadly defined, including public infrastructure and also human capital development of the economy. So we need to reform the financial system so that it promotes the capital development of the economy. So this is very closely related to what uh, Mariana and uh, Bill are talking about. So he says, in order to do this, we need a proper framework. What is the framework? First, the capitalist economy is a financial system. That's what a capitalist economy is, a financial system. The financial structure has become much more unstable than it was in the early post-war period. Third, fragility that has been building up makes it more likely that stagnation or a deep depression is possible. We got the stagnation, we got the very deep recession, a deep depression is still possible. Fourth, a stagnant economy will not promote the capital development of the economy. Who on earth is going to uh, invest in capital if you have a stagnant economy? And finally, but this can be avoided by apt reform of the financial structure plus apt use of the fiscal powers of the government. And we're failing on both of those accounts. Okay, what should a financial system do? Okay, one minute. <laughs> we need five basic functions. A safe and sound payment system. Okay, uh, the, the Bank of England discovered that uh, we need government standing behind the payment system. You cannot have a private payment system. The government must play a role in promoting safety and soundness. Second, you need short-term loans to households, firms, possibly to local government. This was the role of commercial banks. Third, you need a safe and sound housing finance system. Okay, and we know, know that we do not have that. Uh, securitization of mortgages was no substitute for thrifts. In the United States, we had the thrifts. That was a safe and sound financial system. Uh, fourth, you need a range of financial services, including insurance, brokerage, retirement savings. And fifth, this is Mariana's topic, you need long-term funding of positions in expensive capital <coughs> assets. There's no reason to consolidate these things in a single big box financial superstore. There's also no reason to rely on the private sector to fulfill these five functions, there's a role for the government to play, maybe in all of them, but certainly in some of them, including the payment system. Um, so there is a role for the government to play, not only in regulating the financial system, but also in providing for at least some of these financial functions of a financial system. Thanks. Thank you.